it looks like we have about 10 minutes, so I somehow I don't think we're going to be having, having all sorts of questions. Before, I, I, of course, I have lots of questions. I could ask questions all day. Um, let me tr um, ask the audience, um, any questions for any of our panelists here? No questions? You're stuck with me then. Okay. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the obstacles, you know, because I started off at the beginning saying, you know, we've been talking about total hotel revenue management for, you know, six years, five years, whatever, and, um, and it's still, we're still kind of struggling with it a little bit. And so, you know, when, when, when you look at this, what were, what have been, you know, some of the, you know, why, why is it taking so long? What are, what are the biggest obstacles that, that you've seen? I mean, I'll, I mean, any of you can jump, jump right in. Um. Actually, last week I was in Seoul in Korea to work on a function space project. And just like to share with you, I think a couple of things we have heard this morning uh, to have a better alignment of people, process, and technology together. I think a lot of times we talk a lot about new technology, but would the organization structure, would the KPI really drive that behavior? Something about the people, I think that's critical, and also the working process. Especially when you talk about the market segment, how many times do you see, well, the segmentation in Delphi is not really matching in PMS? Or sometimes the channel code, or it's not really talking about uh, the production, but it's also like a, like a reporting tool. So another thing I think is important to say, um, data. Data is about data analyze, not just data collection. A lot of times I see people just collect a lot of reports and read that from revenue meetings. But what's the correlation behind that? What's the root cause you can identify from that? Like we always say, it's Data is not only data, it's like the power to know, right? Yeah. I can probably I can probably help with that as well. Um, I, I go out and I'm in front of a lot of uh, properties and that are trying to implement this total revenue management and profit optimization um, you know concept and I find I deal with a lot of casinos as well. Um, you know we find that you know the casino has one way of doing things because it, it would be you know the most profitable department um, in, in a resort and a lot of times you know they have the great concept that they want to bring everyone in but they let the casino you know work definitely in their silo so they don't pull that and they don't pull that profit center into the total um, calculation which doesn't make a lot of sense I know but I think it's really just people and um, you know working with the culture which we've definitely talked about and making sure that the people are all in line and that would be everybody from A to Z within that property and it needs to come from from above you know, everyone in, in what I find a lot of times is that everyone in rooms will definitely be on the same page and that they'll be trying to drive, you know, going towards that one goal, but you still have those silos that are there. So it, that really comes down to culture. And then you're kind of speaking on the silos. Um, how did, you know, uh, um, so, so, so Taryn Deep, at IHG, how did you, function space is really bad for silo because you've got all these different or, uh, um, departments that are, they each have their own KPIs and they all want to meet them and they might be kind of counter, you know, might have do, do be doing some bad things to make sure that others don't get to get, get their uh, capacity. How did you, what, what, what were some of the things that, that you did to kind of get through that sort of resistance? So I think, uh, 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 the crucial piece, and uh, you talked about the whole people aspect over there, I think the, the key area that we as an organization focused upon in some of our big box hotels was the change management process. Um, it's at the end of the day defining that objective and how to embed that objective down the line. And you're very, very right. Uh, it's not just the function space, even in uh, food and beverage revenue management. I mean, you, you saw the presentation. You can do a number of things on the revenue management piece, but if that... Uh, food and beverage steward is not punching the KOT at the right time or the check at the right time in the morning and is waiting at 10 o'clock in the morning when the entire breakfast thing is over and then punches all the breakfast checks together, you can't do revenue management because then you do not know what time the guest is actually arriving at. So it's a lot more of educational <laughs> process right at the grassroots level. You can decide on all the objectives and the strategies and the softwares and everything in the four walls, air conditioned walls. But till the time your last person, even the person who's sitting as a sales coordinator, entering the information in Delphi, till the time those people will not be convinced of why they are doing it and how does it impact the profitability of your organization. So 
success is never going to come. So you manage that whole change management process, and you will see the success at the end of the day. And Stefan, what about for you? I mean, in Onyx, you don't have too much F&B in that, correct? That's right, right. but it's, it's more by design. I mean, um, we have uh, now started this year, 2015, we need to roll out the tool to track um, F&B by outlet um, pattern. And then we haven't started rolling out F&B revenue management, as far as revenue management, but we basically SPA and F&B is the first time we developed tools ourselves to really track the data. And one of the challenges time we said the same for us, because we had to train people on the hotels, on the F&B outlets to really how to collect the data correctly, what's the right um, time the market segments and to put in um, for each of the guests. And, um, but I think also for us, uh, as you mentioned in your slide, um, Jay, profitability was higher for rooms. So the focus was definitely on rooms. Um, we do have, we see it's important not to um, ignore the other areas of uh, revenue management, revenue streams, but if you put too much on from the start, I think then it would be confusing and it would be a small challenge to implement the revenue culture. But uh, since now we are making health strides for rooms, I think this will start into F&B and SPA, but both simultaneously. So it's tracking data and by the end of the year, we'll be rolling on strategies. And you know, um, hindsight is 2020. So really, looking at what performance has been in the past, and you know, adding some hard, you know, some hard costs to say this is what we missed out on. That that usually speaks volumes. So um, really, you just need to you know have great analytics to see you know okay, we're not you know we're not optimizing in this one area, and this is what it means for our bottom line. And lo and behold, people start to listen. But I think it's also you know, kind of back to the change management. And some of you were we had a session yesterday morning. We were talking about you know revenue management driving this. And so you go into your restaurant and um, your director of FB and say, I'm from revenue management, I can help you. Um, what are you doing? You're telling me that I don't know what I'm, you don't, I don't know how to run a restaurant. I mean, you don't hardly even know how to eat. And so, I mean, you get in, you, and so, so how does that, how do you go about, I mean, you know, we could talk, you know, change management, okay, fine. How do you get through that kind of thing? Because it's very, I mean, it's, I mean, you could see why people would be very, very threatened. I mean, what have been some of the, the, um, the and Jeanette, Jeanette, I don't know whether you could hear us, Jeanette's very masterful at this. I've watched her in action. But how, what are some of the tricks that you've used to get people to, to go along with you?
Thanks, Jeanette. Anybody else want to add into that? Um, just one example, not from Onyx, but the previous company um, I worked for, and that's uh, about water park revenue management. Um, when I started to uh, introduce the concepts of revenue management to apply for water park, the gentleman said, me, I'm totally crazy. Nobody in the world does that. Um, so it was not as easy as I thought. So you look at the numbers, look at the patterns. I mean, it's very clearly that if you are having the same price every day, uh, no seasons every day of the year, you're not optimizing your revenue. Um, I said, no, I, you know, I definitely don't want to be the first one. So I thought it's going to be so easy because it's in front of you, but the GM had a different opinion, I mean, for GM from the water park. So what I did is, uh, okay, maybe we do something different. Um, let's try with something smaller and then apply a uh, concept um, for revenue management on your cabanas, um, which is you know, only a small part of the water park, but uh, introducing the concept of dynamic pricing. And there he was willing to try that out, because okay, mm, okay not many loss, a uh, lot of loss for God because only six cabanas. But uh, by doing so, um, he was then more open-minded to change the whole approach of revenue management. But big learning for me, definitely just by having the data doesn't guarantee success. You, you may have to do a little bit smaller steps and uh, trying to convince some other non-revenue experts that revenue management really drives profitability. Yeah, because I kind of refer to it as getting through the arm, arm uh, crossed and glaring at you sort of thing. Because I mean, that's very, very, very much the situation. And then I know we just have a couple minutes. I want